Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to talk about some authors that I love, some romance authors that I love who don't publish anymore. I feel like this is a bit of a strange topic, but at the same time, I really wanted to do it because I was thinking about these authors that I loved that I read years and years ago who just aren't publishing anymore, or they were supposed to publish something and it's been a hot minute since they last did. There are quite a few of my favorite authors, like my top favorite authors, who just have not published anything in a really long time. I know for sure that I'm not alone in this, so I just wanted to make this video like me sharing about my favorite authors and then commiserating about them not having any new books. As much as we would love our favorite authors to write forever, obviously sometimes that's just not possible. Some authors pass on, some of them just completely stop writing, and other times we just don't really know the reason why. I'm not gonna go into any reasons why you know these authors stopped writing because honestly I don't really know anything besides what they post on social media for everyone else to see. I just wanted to share my list of my favorite authors who sadly don't publish anymore and of course if you have your own list please feel free to share them. I would love to know if we share any of the same authors. First on my list is a historical romance author. She was actually one of the very first romance authors that I ever read. Like I started reading romances through Highlander historical romances and when one of my favorite authors who writes Highlander historical romances is Maya Banks. I discovered her through her McCabe trilogy. I think this is book two, but I love the series so much. It was one of the first historical romances that I ever read. I was obsessed with the trilogy and just could not get enough of Highlanders. Maya Banks technically hasn't written and released a new book since 2017, but she did re-release a few shorter historical romances that she wrote like a decade ago. Those books were re-released back in 2019. They were called The Vault collection but again those books were books that she had already written a long time ago. So it's been a good five years since we last got something new from Maya Banks not including the vault collection, her historicals, and she does have a series that I've been waiting nine years for, literally nine years for, to release like the third and final book. It's the spinoff of the McCabe trilogy. This is the Montgomery's and Armstrong series. Book two, Highlander Most Wanted, came out back in 2013 and I read it back in 2013. So I have been waiting almost a decade for the third book to come out. She never published it for some reason, even though there was a title, there was a cover, there was like a pre-order and stuff. It was also supposed to be published by Berkeley, who published, you know, the first two books in the series, but then it kind of moved to a different publisher, to Avon, and then they redid the cover for it. I'm not like a huge fan of the new cover. I love this style. And unfortunately, they didn't really keep it. So Avon was supposed to publish it, but in the past few years, the release date has been changing and been pushed back over and over. So I have no idea if Highland Ever After is gonna come out, if it's ever supposed to. Luckily though, even though I've been waiting like a decade for a new historic romance from her, she does actually have a humongous backlist, so it's not like I don't have any books to read from her, but I'm not gonna lie, her historical romances and her Harlequins are really the only ones that I read and care about. She does have a bunch of erotic romances, like there's one series that I read from her called The Enforcers that was pretty good. There was a good groveling book in there, and she also has a bunch of romantic suspense books that I've never really tried. And similar to this historical romance series, she also has another series called the KGI series that like the latest book has been pushed back over and over. Thankfully though, I have not read that series, so I'm not gonna be waiting on two series for her to finish up. But I have heard that she was sick, I think. She's mentioned a couple of times on social media that she's been dealing with health problems over the past few years. And that's probably the reason why she hasn't put out anything in five years, but I do hope that she's doing okay. Moving on to one of my favorite mafia and dark romance authors, and that is J.M. Darhauer. I discovered her when I read her other book, Sempre, but I fell absolutely in love with her when I read this series, the Monster in His Eyes series. This series is literally one of my top favorites in mafia romances. There's a forbidden age gap romance, the hero is a very dark hero, and also books two and three are written in his point of view, and I loved loved being in the hero's head. I also read and loved the spin-off Scarlet Scars series. I read her regular, normal, contemporary romance. It's a second chance romance called Ghosted, and I read a couple others of her mafia romances. But sadly, she hasn't released anything since Ghosted, which came out back in 2017. I'm also waiting on the sequel to a novella that she wrote in an anthology called One. That novella was amazing. I loved it. It was supposed to be a prequel to a mafia romance called 20 to 
life, but that never ended up releasing either. The story was about this arranged mafia marriage and the heroine like on the night before she's supposed to get married, she goes out and it meets a guy. She has no idea who he is, but they have this really fantastic connection that night and you can kind of guess who he's supposed to be. But yeah, I've been waiting for 20 to Life, like the full length sequel since 2015. So it's been a good seven year wait for that, but I would love some more mafia romances from J.M. Darhauer. I love her stories and I love her characters. Her writing is great. I'm not sure though if she's actually still writing. Like she's active on social media, active on Twitter, but she doesn't really talk about the books that she's writing. This next author is an oldie in the indie romance community. It is Gail McHugh. She's one of those indie authors who blew up back in around 2013. She released her Collide Duet and everyone was talking about it. And she was one of those OG indie authors who also got picked up by a publisher, like a publisher picked up the Collide Duet and traditionally it published it. I did really like the Collide series. She was a really good angsty romance author. The duet was about a heroine who was in an abusive relationship and falls for another man. So there's this forbidden love triangle thing going on. After Clyde, she did release a new book with a publisher called Amber to Ashes. I actually never read that one because I knew it was supposed to be a series. So I kind of wanted to wait until the series finished, but sadly the sequel never got published. It was about another love triangle and the sequel was called From the Storm and the author did, you know, give updates back in 2016 that it was supposed to release but that just never happened. Gail McHugh just hasn't published anything since 2015 and she's kind of dropped off social media so I have no idea what's going on with her but she was a really popular author that a lot of my blogger friends was obsessed with and sadly we just haven't really heard from her since her three books. If you love rock star romances and you might have heard of Olivia Cunning you might have even read her and I love her so much. I loved her Sinners on Tour series when I discovered it back in high school in 2012, 2013. It's a five book erotic romance series about a group of rock stars who all fall in love. The first book had an older heroine. Book two was the second chance romance, so of course it was my favorite. Book three was super BDSM heavy. Book four was freaking adorable. I love this one. It's also another favorite in the series. And book five was the menage romance. So there's a lot of things going on in the Sinners on Tour series, but I highly recommend it if you love steamy romances. Like these books were both hot and funny, which Olivia Cunning was just so good at writing. I love the book so much that I may have introduced my high school friends to the series. Like we were reading some insane smut back in high school. After Sinners on Tour finished, she did release a spin-off series called Exodus End, and I am still waiting on a sequel in that series. I've been waiting since 2018 for book four to release. Like the series, the spin-off is about these two bands. This one female a rock band and the other band features a brother from the original series and I've been waiting for four years for that brother's book and I'm still dying for it. Her last release was back in 2019. A couple authors did stop writing in 2019 which makes sense because of what happened in 2020. But yeah that release was like a shorter romance in a different rock star romance series. Olivia Cunning used to be pretty active on her blog but I think since 2019 she hasn't updated yet. I do hope she's still writing Writing though because I love her books. I know rockstar romances aren't quite as popular as they used to be but I still kind of love them. Another one of my all-time favorite books and all-time favorite authors is The Sea of Tranquility by Katia Mille. I love this book so much so it was pretty devastating that the author never released anything besides this book. This book was literally like a one-hit wonder. It's her one and only book and she's also another one of those OG indie authors who got picked up by a publisher. It was one of the early new adult romances that I read. I think I read it before it even got picked up by a publisher, but I really fell in love with this book, with the writing. It is so emotional and heart-wrenching. It's set in high school, but still very new adult and content and vibe. It's about a girl who becomes selectively a mute after this really traumatic event and talks for the first time in a very long time to the hero, who is a total sweetheart. Even though I am still a little bit salty after all these years over what he did towards the end of the 
the book. But still, this book was beautiful and brilliant, and I'm so sad the author never came out with anything, at least not under the Katia Millet name. It came out back in 2012, 10 freaking years ago, and we haven't heard from the author since. I mean, I'm curious if she ever wrote anything else under, you know, a pen name or something. But yeah, this was a one-hit wonder, and I am very glad that I actually got a signed copy of this book. Another one of my favorites is Sylvia Day because of her Crossfire series. That series was, it came out in the era of Fifty Shades, but I love this one so, so much. I've reread the series a million times. Gideon and Ava were fantastic. Sylvia Day finished up the Crossfire series back in 2016, and she teased a new series at the end of the final book. There was a two-chapter teaser for a series that was supposed to come out in like 2017. The teaser was fantastic. Like, I was hooked on only two chapters. It was supposed to be a second chance romance with an alpha hero who was obsessed with the heroine, so obviously I couldn't help but love it. But she sadly never came out with a Blacklist duet, and she has been saying that she's been writing it and it's supposed to come out, but we just don't have a release date yet. Recently, though, she has been mentioning that she's been waiting on the publisher to announce, like, release dates and such, so hopefully that means that the book, that the duet, is actually already written, and maybe it might come out this year, who knows, but it still has been a good six years since that duet was first teased. Her latest release was from three years ago, Butterfly and Frost. This came out in 2019. It's a shorter book though, it's not like a full-length book. It's a novella that she released with Amazon with Montlake, and it does feature Ava and Gideon from the Crossfire series, like they make this super tiny cameo. It was good, but it was a little bit too short for me, and it also wasn't the duet that I was waiting for. Luckily though, she is pretty active on her social media, so we know she's not, you know, dropped off the face of the earth, but I will die if she ever does release the Blacklist duet. Another author that I love who sadly just doesn't publish anymore is Katie Evans. I adored Katie Evans when she came out with her Real series, which is another oldie indie romance series, and I've pretty much read everything from her since. She loved writing about fighters and billionaires, and I loved her alpha heroes so much. The Real series was amazing. I love the Man Horse series series too. Like she had some really, really good series back when she was first releasing books. I will admit her newer stuff I don't really love as much. Like her last release, Best Man, I literally hated that one. That was one of the worst books that I ever read, but I still love her. Don't get me wrong, and I would definitely read another book of hers if she ever does come out with a new book. Her newer releases besides Best Man, which came out in 2019, she did publish some books with Harlequin, like these shorter reads. They weren't amazing, but I still love that for her. I love that she published with with Harlequin, but she is another author who just isn't really active on social media anymore, especially since 2019. I do believe she has mentioned some health problems that affected her writing, so that could possibly be the reason why she hasn't released anything in a long time. I had to include one of my favorite historical romance authors, even though I've only read two of her books so far, but I do love them. It is Judith McNaught. Judith McNaught is a classic in historical romance, even though you'll probably either love her or hate her. I definitely love her. I was instantly obsessed when I first read Whitney My Love, which is now one of my all-time favorite books. The Kingdom of Dreams was also fantastic, and like a lot of other old-school historical romance authors, she did to write a bunch of romantic suspenses, and her last book was one of those romantic suspenses. It was called Every Breath You Take. I'm actually genuinely sad she never published anything after 2005, even though she did republish a novella in 2014. She does weirdly have a pre-order up for a contemporary romance called The Sweetest Thing, which is book two in her Foster Saga series. It is being published by Gallery Books, so there is like a legitimateness to it, but the release date is for December 31st, 2045, which by the way is the same year that Judith McNaught would turn 101 according to Google. So I highly doubt that's ever going to happen. I don't think the book would ever be published anymore either just because I don't think Judith McNaught is writing anymore. Like she's 77 now and she's probably living off her book royalties or retirement, but you know, who knows? Maybe she might come back. Another author that I'm genuinely so sad about who passed away last year is Christy Cunning, who also wrote under C.M. Owens and S.T. Abbey. I've only read her Christy Cunning books so far, her reverse harem romances. I fell in love with her Dark Side series last year. It was amazing, and I did start on her other reverse harem romance series, the All the Pretty Monsters series, but I haven't finished it just yet. But the All the Pretty Monsters series, the last book in the series was the last 
last book that she ever published before she passed away. That series finished up in 2019, but she did have a posthumous release in 2022. She wrote under Sam Owens and co-wrote with S.M. Shade, and the book was called Fuck It. So that's probably gonna be her final release unless she has some other books that she was writing that her family might release posthumously. But it was so tragic when she passed. Her writing was fantastic. I loved her sense of humor in the Dark Side series. Thankfully though, she does have a pretty big backlist that you can read from, and I definitely need to read her other two pen names. This last one isn't really a romance author. She's more like an urban fantasy author, but I do love her and I do love the romance that was in this series. Stacia Kane wrote the Downside Ghost series, which I was obsessed with like a decade ago. That was when I first discovered urban fantasy and I fell in love with the genre and I fell in love with this series. It's like this paranormal dystopian world where the heroine is a drug addict. She's a witch and a ghost hunter and there's this amazing romance with a mob boss enforcer who is just a giant teddy bear with the heroine. I love the series though. I love the romance. I love the action. It was so dark and gritty. I still remember that I got chills from book one because it was just so creepy but good and addicting. So I read the first four books in the series in the Downside Ghost series and I waited to read book five because I wanted the series to complete before I finished it up. Sadly though Stacey Kane just never came out with another sequel after book five. Like she published a couple novellas, she published this completely different standalone that was a contemporary after that but that was back in 2016 and she hasn't published anything since then. She does thankfully update her blog not so much recently but she's still there and she has mentioned that she's been writing the next book in the Downside Ghost series. So she is still active, just not as much in the past few years. So that was my last author on my list of my favorites who don't publish anymore, but I did want to mention two authors that I originally had on this list when I first came up with the idea to make a video for it. I am very thankful though that I was able to take them off my list because one of them made her comeback this year and another one is coming out with a new release in July. And the one who made her comeback back already was Cressley Cole. She finally came back after her five-year hiatus. She released a new book back in January. She came out with the newest Immortals After Dark book, Monroe, which was fantastic. Her last book before that was Wicked Abyss back in 2017, so again, five years. She is indie publishing her books now. I'm pretty sure all her future books are going to be indie published. She has another release planned this year. It's going to be the final book in the Arcana Chronicle series, which I have been reading and loving so far. The final book in the Arcana Chronicle series is planned for summer of 2022, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Of course, she does have some more Immortals After Dark books to write and release, but I personally would love it if she ever wrote some more Mafia romances in her Game Maker series. This was a series that made me fall in love with her. Just a request, but I would love it if she ever wrote a romance for the sister in the third book in The Player. She got pregnant and the baby dad he thought she cheated even though she didn't and he still follows her around because he can't seem to let her go. And also the sister and the whole family are con artists so that was really cool to read about and I would love if we got more of that. And the other author who is making her comeback later this year in 2022 is Queen Julie Garwood. One of the queens of historical romance and romantic suspense is back after five years. She's coming out with a new book in July. I don't know why but for some reason 2017 it was just a really popular popular year for authors to take a break, but Julie Garwood is back. I'm so happy and excited about her upcoming book. It's called Grace Under Fire, and it's the next book in her Buchanan Renard series. It's book 14, Another Romantic Suspense, and I actually have read book 13, Wired, which I loved. That was the only romantic suspense I read from her, though. I've mostly only read her historicals, but I am very, very looking forward to this new release. I would die, though, if she ever came out with another historical romance because, I mean, that's what she's known for. Still, I am beyond happy about 2022, where two of my all-time favorite authors have come back, and it would be amazing if some of the other authors on my list also made a comeback. I mean, I feel like the one 
author who has the best chance at coming back is Sylvia Day just because she's been replying to a lot of comments on Facebook about having news that she's been waiting to announce. But yeah, if any of these other authors ever released a new book, a new romance, I would snatch it up so fast. If you've read any of these authors that I mentioned, I would love to know so I'm not alone in waiting for another book from them. As always, links to everything will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye!